Let's dive into the data and the implications for the markets and the Fed now with Diane Swank. She's chief economist at KPMG and our own CNBC senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman. Great to have you both here. As always, really appreciate it. Diane, you almost nailed it again. What is in your formula? How are you figuring this out? <laughs> Uh, luck, I don't know, but I know I do know that we are going to get more of a rebound from the strikes as we get into July, into December, and I think that's important because all of the plants. It was a cold open as those plants were reopened, and they weren't all the workers weren't all back in the UAW strike. So we'll see more from that. Also from the actor strike, we still have a lot of workers that are going to be called back. So I think December is going to be an even stronger month. And the good news is, even though wages accelerated. We with a comeback in the motion picture and studio, the motion picture and sound production sector, which was some of that comeback from the Hollywood strike. There was an increase in wages there. We also are going to see more wage increases as we see those UAW contracts kick in. We saw two of their competitors raise wages a minute. Those contracts were actually signed and verified, and I think that's important because that didn't happen until after the survey week. All right, and you thought we were going to get 190 k So, I mean, you were very close. By the way, because even I'm looking through, you thought the unemployment rate would hold steady. Why do you think we dropped to 3.7 percent? Is that an aberration, or is there is there real information in that move? I, you know, it was all for all of the right reasons. So, first of all, we had a catch up in employment in the household survey that wasn't there last month. So, we had a catch up in employment. But we also saw an increase in participation at the same time that the ranks of the unemployed went down. So, it was for all the right reasons. We saw prime age, we saw men actually increase their participation rate in teens. This increase in teens has been ongoing. And that's something that, frankly, we've not seen. The peak in the teen participation rate was 1979. Um, back when I was a teen. So it was a long time ago. And I think that's important as well as we're actually seeing some people come back into the labor force that weren't there before. To see that increase in participation is really encouraging. Steve, we did see bond yields move up after the average hourly earnings came in a little better than expected, 423 on the 10-year. You might have thought the markets could kind of gallop off with this narrative of, hey, maybe the Fed has to stay in the picture, except then we got the inflation expectations number, which was way more dovish as, as gasoline prices prices have dropped and maybe does give the Fed some more breathing room here. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to, can I to coin a term here, Kelly? What do you think about not Goldilocks, but kind of like silver locks or bronze locks? <laughs> it sounds was, like was an it aged Goldilocks. <laughs> it it, it, like it wasn't a 100%. Yeah, it's an aging team. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't mean it that way. I just mean it wasn't 100%. I have a really good colorist, Steve. How, <laughs> it sounds a how. I don't need one, as you can see. Um, it wasn't 100 <laughs> percent in terms of the inflation story. Wages were a little bit up. Uh, hours worked were higher, which also speaks to tightness. Of course, the unemployment yep. rate fell with an influx, but you put more people to work. So it wasn't 100 percent. I like this. I think it was good for Wall Street and good for Main Street, this number, because at 100, I'm calling it 150,000 because I am taking off the 47,000 or so, which were likely returning strike workers. Um, so call it 150. It's above the influx of workers into the workforce when it comes to the labor force growth. So that still creates some bargaining power, especially for skilled workers. Um, but it's also good for Main Street because it is definitely, or for Wall Street, it's a step down, I think, in terms of job growth. And the Fed can like that. I don't think the Fed's paying a whole lot of attention to the one-year rate. Because you know what the one-year rate is? It's a poll on, when it comes to inflation expectations, it's a poll on gas prices. If you put the two up together, they've got like a 60% yeah. R squared or correlation. So it's not really that big a deal. What is a big deal, maybe more so, is the um, five-year number, which did tick down 2.8. I think the Fed wants to see that lower yet, but it's been relatively stable at that level. And if you just look at the outlook for the Federal Reserve and for rate cuts next year, first I'll show you the, the March number. It did come down below 50 percent in terms of uh, uh, probabilities for a rate cut there. And then also the amount of rate cut built in came down a little bit, though the market, I don't know, may still be over its skis a little bit in terms of how much in the way of rate cuts it expects. Um, next year. We're going to get, I hope, some guidance from Powell next week when it comes to how much we should be thinking about that, or at least how much he's thinking about.